So the news first came up, it popped up on the raid official server, but I put it here in my Discord. I was actually, you know, I came home early today because a client cancelled on me, and I was in the middle of editing my Helldivers 2 video when I got the notification. So, let's go ahead and read it together. I have yet to read this myself, but I did skim some of the words when I was posting this here. We're adding a separate new branch of missions that will become available simultaneously with the missions that unlock Vermontu Drake's Blood. They're talking about the missions right here. You know, you start out by doing part one, part two, part three, then part four, when you're in the late game, you get Arbiter. Then you can go into the end game, part one, part two, part three. This is Vermontu Drake's Blood. This is the champion that you get. Awesome champion. I, I use him for pretty much PvP. He's a PvP champion for me. As you can see, like he's, he's in my main arena team. This is my main arena team that I use to push plat and everything. And then I use them in Tag Team Arena as well. Meaning that once you've completed the missions to get Arbiter, you'll be able to go for Ramontu and start a new branch at the same time. There will be a total of 180 new progress missions divided into three gr Oh, I forgot the lights in the background. Hold up. While that's coming on, I'll read it here. The new missions will focus on the following features. Live Arena, Cursed City, Hydra, Champion Awakening, Gear Ascent, Gear Ascension, and so on. And of course, just as always, you'll be able to receive various rewards for completing each task. Once you complete all 180 new missions, you can claim the main reward in the form of a brand new legendary champion, Marius the Gallant. From the Skinwalkers. It seems like Skinwalkers are getting a lot of love lately. So the only issue I have with this, do you guys recall or are you guys struggling currently? If so, let me know which one um, you are struggling with. Do you guys remember struggling with some of the missions? Some of the main missions are a hassle and a half to deal with. What about the uh, getting into Silver 4 or getting into Gold 1 of Tag Team Arena? I think the one that stands out the most to me in my memory of one of the main missions that you have to do is using your glyphs. If you didn't know this, you need to save your glyphs rank five and above because the mission is going to ask you, it's going to tell you 40 times you need to get max stat on one of these. That mission really sucked. So I don't know what they're going to ask for us. They say live arena. Hopefully they don't ask me to get into gold four. Cursed city. I hope they don't tell us um, freaking do all the, the, the stages of Cursed City. Or beating Amius in a, in of itself is a, a hassle and a half. Hydra, we could probably do Hydra, especially if you're already, you know, doing 1Qs. Champion Awakening and Gear Ascension. That seems kind of pay to winny. Alright, there he is. You know, he actually looks pretty cool. Anytime I see a, a humanoid horse type thing, I think of Beta Ray Bill from the Thor comics. Just the horse cladded out in armor. Any Thor fans out there? Uh, comic book fans, not MCU. He's a Void Champion. He is going to be free. Attacks all enemies. Has a 35% chance of placing Enfeeble for one turn. It's a 50% chance to do so. And it looks like one, two, three, four books. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books, okay. That That's okay. Nine books is all right. A2 on a three turn cooldown when booked. AoE three times. Each hit decreases the duration of enemy buffs by one turn. That is huge. Because if you don't know, uh, the way Sheep works is if you try to place or remove uh, or, or like do anything to that effect on somebody who has the Sheep, the Polymorph um, uh, Blessing on them, you have a high chance of getting Sheep. But decreased duration of all enemy buffs does not have an effect on Polymorph. It doesn't proc Polymorph. At the end of this video, I'll link a video showing that, showcasing that. Timid the Fool has this move. Decreased duration of all enemy buffs by three turns. And he doesn't proc Polymorph. It's a reliable way to get rid of something like Stone Skin, for an example, assuming you have the accuracy and you pass the 50-50 check. And then we have Galloping Thunder on a four turn cooldown placing increased accuracy and then increased defense on all allies for three turns. That's nice. I don't actually use increased accuracy that much, but I'm pretty sure it's nice to have. Increased defense isn't too common. There are some, some champions that do increased defense on all allies, but what I really like is that it's a three turn buff. And then I think with masters, you could even make it four turns. It's, it's a good buff to have. And then places a stun debuff on the enemy with the highest turn meter for one turn. That's, that's awesome because you can cut in. So for an example, um, let's see, maybe like a Lissandra. Anyway, you place a stun 
it, it seems like it's 100%, assuming you have the accuracy, because it says it, it places the stun. It doesn't talk about chance. I could be wrong if anybody could correct me. Finally grants an extra turn. I like that. I'm okay with that being a four turn cooldown. It grants an extra turn, essentially making it a three turn cooldown, right? And then what you can do is start out with the A3 rolling into the A2 with that extra turn. That That's a great kit. And then Steadfast Knight. This champion is immune to turn meter reduction effects and decreased speed. Pretty self-explanatory. Whenever an enemy changes form or attempts to... I'm, I'm kind of smiling here because it's like, okay, now we're talking about his effect on the mythical champions. Whenever an enemy changes form or attempts to decrease this champion's turn meter, counterattacks using this champion's default skill, his enfeeble. It, oh, wait, wait. I didn't read that correctly. It's an AoE. I, I'm excited to, to get this champion. Again, I don't know how long it's going to take. It took forever to get Arbiter, then it took forever to get freaking Romantu. It's probably going to take me another year or two to get Marius. Increased defense in all battles by 35%. That's huge. I don't know what his multipliers are. He seems more like a support champion. I don't know if he's going to smack hard, but like all of his moves are AoEs. If he can do damage, I might be enticed to building him like a nuker although you're gonna want some accuracy that enfeeble debuff is is huge i do think i'd want him to go fast maybe a relentless set a stun set would always be nice on a champion with aoe's that could just add to the extra i mean he has stun in his a3 but this could be extra annoying you get enfeebled and then you get stunned and apparently if you didn't know this i just I was getting ready to upload this video because I completed editing it. Polarium does this. I feel like it's been the fifth freaking anniversary forever in Raid Shadow Legends. Ash is saying another free champion nobody's talking about that is going to be available for us during the five year anniversary event starting in March, the Festival of Creation. So I'm just gonna spread the word about that, but definitely go ahead and check out Ash's video. He's gonna go more in depth about it. This one, the the other free champion arguably even maybe more free than the grind that's going to be uh marius all right so i did find a shorts video on their channel so i'm going to go ahead and play it arnok there he is starts in march yeah there it is. That's the shorts read. Shadow Legends. It almost looks like they, they tried to model this after Jack Sparrow.